and welcome to another edition of Julia Herdman History. In this program, I'll be delving into the process of creating compelling female characters in historical fiction. In the world of historical fiction, the portrayal of characters is truly an art form. Just like people today, historical figures were complex individuals with their own thoughts, emotions, desires, and beliefs. This holds true for both men and women. But, creating solid and compelling female characters in historical fiction can be challenging, especially when writing about the opposite sex. But don't let that intimidate you. Men can write just as authentically about women, as women can write authentically about men. To truly bring historical female characters to life, you must delve deep into the female psyche, to imbibe your characters with the richness and depth they deserve. Here are some effective techniques for developing multidimensional and well-rounded female characters in historical fiction. Number 1. Dive deep into the research. Understand your character's era, including the day's social, political, and cultural norms. Take, for example, the real historical character of Princess Isabella of Castile. Isabella was the youngest daughter of King Ferdinand II and Queen Isabella I. As a young princess of the prestigious house of Trastamara, Isabella grew up amid the Spanish court's political intrigues and cultural splendor. Although her life is relatively well documented for a woman of her era, we can glean little of Isabella's stature and personality from historical records or the few medieval portraits of her that have survived into the modern era. So, as a novelist, if you were writing a story about Isabella, it is essential to create a compelling backstory that showcases her character and complexity. As we know so little about Isabella's physical appearance, she could be described as modestly tall, with a figure that was slim yet graceful, indicative of her noble upbringing. Her long dark chestnut hair might be described as falling in soft waves because she often wore it unbraided, adorned with jeweled ribbons, indicating a free nature, or tightly knotted under her rounded bonnet, indicating a more austere nature. Her complexion might be considered dark with a hint of olive. Perhaps inherited from her Spanish mother, or fair like her father's. And her hazel eyes might sparkle with flecks of gold, or her black eyes might shine like rounds of polished jet. We know from historical records that from a young age, Isabella displayed a keen intellect and a strong will. She was known for her piety and dedication to her faith, often spending hours in the chapel in deep prayer. However, despite her serious demeanor, Isabella is said to have possessed a kind heart and shown great compassion for her ladies in waiting. She was also described as having a sharp mind for politics eagerly absorbing lessons on diplomacy and governance from her tutors. We know, too, that she loved reading. Isabella was deeply curious about the world beyond the castle walls. She learned to speak several languages fluently, including Latin, French, and Italian, and she had a talent for music, often playing the lute to entertain the court. Number 2. It's essential to give your characters agency. Allow your female characters to make meaningful choices and have explicit goals. Show how they navigate their time constraints while asserting their own free will. Her first marriage was to Prince Afonso of Portugal was part of a peace treaty between Spain and Portugal. Alfonso was five years her junior, but surprisingly, they fell for each other. And when Afonso was killed in a riding accident, Isabella was genuinely heartbroken. But Isabella was not a modern woman, she was a woman of her own time, and her beliefs differed from ours. After Alfonso's death, she became convinced God had allowed him to die to punish Portugal for giving sanctuary to Jews her parents had expelled from Spain. Isabella returned to Spain mourning Alfonso and promising never to marry again. However, when Alfonso's father, John II, died in 1497, his successor, Manuel, his nephew, not his son, sought Isabella's hand in marriage. Isabella stubbornly refused at first but relented when Manuel promised to expel all the Jews in Portugal who would not convert to Christianity. Isabella was clearly able to extract the price she wanted from Manuel for the marriage. A year later, Isabella gave birth to her only child, Miguel de Paz, Prince of Portugal. 
perhaps because of her relentless religious fasting and acts of self-denial, or maybe it was the continuous traveling around Spain with her family that led to her death an hour after her son's birth, we simply don't know. This could be another area of her life a novelist could explore with interesting results. We do know from the historical record that Isabella asked to be buried dressed as a nun, which perhaps explains a lot about her, and that she wanted to be buried at the convent of Santa Isabel in Toledo. The center of the Spanish church's persecution of Jews. Clearly, Isabella is a character modern audiences would find difficult to like. Her religious fanaticism and persecution of the Jews make her a very unsympathetic character. However, as the author, how you set up the character or characters determines how sympathetic the character is. Character traits can be part of the foreshadowing of what is to come in the story. How receptive would you make Isabella to new experiences, ideas, and perspectives, knowing now how she turned out to be? Would you show Isabella as a well-organized, responsible, and self-disciplined girl who knew her own mind? Or would you portray her as a victim of indoctrination whose meticulous attention to religious life and strong sense of duty allowed her to be manipulated by the religious authorities? Exploring the impact of her conscientiousness and her decisions adds to her portrayal's depth. Examining whether she was an outgoing, sociable person energized by social interactions or who finds solace in introspection and personal reflection will also help build her character. Understanding her position on this spectrum allows you to create realistic dynamics within her relationships and social environments. How compassionate, cooperative, and empathetic you make her will also add to her story. Will she be inclined towards altruism and forming harmonious connections with others, or will she be up for a fight? Delving into her agreeableness will help to reveal her motivations, conflicts, and potential for growth. Knowing so little about Isabella from the historical record, as an author, you can decide whether she was emotional, stable, anxious or subject to violent mood swings. We know that she liked to fast. Would that have made her moody and challenging to live with or vulnerable and weak? We also know she mourned Alfonso excessively. Was this a sign that she was not all that mentally stable? As an author, you could hint at Isabella's darker nature by describing her religious fanaticism and intolerance. By thoughtfully considering these personality traits, you can infuse your historical female characters with authenticity, allowing them to resonate profoundly and meaningfully with readers. Remember, just as with people today, historical figures deserve to be portrayed as complex individuals with their own hopes, fears, and aspirations. And like modern people, not all of them were entirely sane or pleasant. Princesses like Isabella were not Disney creations. They were real women who lived in a violent, intolerant society where life was short and often painful, both physically and emotionally. I hope I have given you a glimpse of what it takes to build up a person's character from history, or an entirely fictional character for that matter. If you follow these tips, you'll be well on your way to creating female characters that captivate readers and bring your historical narratives to life. Remember, the key is to stay curious, passionate and committed to authenticity. If you have enjoyed this video, or found it helpful, please show your appreciation by pressing the like button and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, this is Julia Herdman wishing you all the best, and happy writing.